Hi friends, my name is Jake. Welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge. And we've got the CJRB Feldspar here today. The uh, large or the regular edition and the small edition. I am very glad I got both of them. I wish I had enough money to get two of every knife that I want to review so that I can really see what the factory is consistently doing bad and what they're consistently doing well. Because these two things, on some parts, they've got opposite things going wrong. I'll explain as we get into the video. By the way, CJRB, the parent company, is Artisan Cutlery. If you have not seen my video about the, the Artisan Cutlery biome and my piece in there about the after sales service, you might want to watch that. Uh, to be fair, it has not been very long, but since then, the guy named Russell, who is the support person for Artisan Cutlery in North America, has said that he's finally sent me the part. I haven't got it yet, but to be fair, it hasn't been a lot of time yet. And with COVID, mail is going slower than normal. So I'll give them that. But just as an update, they are saying that they're still fixing it but it's still not fixed. Let's get to the tabletop and take a good look at both of these. Today, let's begin with a size comparison with the Ontario Rat 1. We'll line up the pivot screws, and there you go. It is a slightly bigger knife than our Feldspar in terms of the handle. Blade length, very much the same blade length. They come to pretty much the same line if you line up these lines here. Although on the video it might look like this one's a bit longer. They're actually the same length. But the handle comes back a little bit further here. The thickness, a little bit thinner. And of course, the little guy is definitely smaller. And these are lighter as well than the Ontario. What materials do these guys come in? Well, they come in G10 from the factory, but now you can also get micarta. White Mountain Knives is a good place to get these right now. They've got, I think, all of their options in stock. I just checked about uh, 15, 20 minutes ago. So there's lots of them available. This is a knife that's been out since uh, late spring, early summer 2020. So it's been a while that it's been around. The All the hype from the early reviews is over and I think there's still a number of people who've never purchased this who might be interested in my take on them. Now the prices for these, these are very well priced right now. Uh, White Mountain Knives has got the large version starting at uh, $39.99, $49.99 for the micarta, for the red micarta that they have. So that's not bad at all. Those are American dollars. Take off 10% and that's $35.99 for the large with G10. The small version is $36.99 up to $39.99, depending on the colors that you're choosing. So that's uh, with 10% off, $33.29 up to $35.99. Those are very good prices. So the $39.99, $40 US dollars, turn that into Canadian dollars, and it's 45 Canadian dollars. Not bad at all. In Canada, though, these are, I found them at uh, Blades Canada for $57.99 and $61.99. So $4 more for the large. If you don't need to get the small one, the large one certainly is more bang for your buck. But a lot of us like to carry smaller knives quite often. And I'm one of those guys. I do like a good small knife. It's a little more discreet, and yet it's got almost as much edge to get the job done. So if you look at this, the blade shape, we've got a pretty much a spear point kind of shape, a drop point here, and a slow belly here, almost at the same rate as the drop on the spine, which makes for a knife that is excellent for piercing. We've got a flat saber grind. Saber grinds are flat. I had a commenter tell me that this is not a flat grind. That's a saber grind. Well, yeah, saber grinds are flat. It's not a full flat grind, 
but it's definitely a flat grind. Stone washed. I think it would be great if these would come in a black wash or black stone wash. That's a finish I really like a lot. But I like stone wash a lot too because it doesn't leave my fingerprints quite as obvious. The stone wash on these is done quite well. The sharpening of them, not so well. And I just did a video a few days ago about um, why it's a fool's errand to try to copy the grind angles on budget knives especially. And I used these two knives as the examples. And these things are far from extraordinary. It's the sharpening on these is super common with uh, any other budget knife in the same price bracket. But the good thing is, it's not that hard to learn how to sharpen well, and you can fix what they did at the factory and have a good knife for a long time. The steel on these is D2. The handle here, the liners are inset. They're highly skeletonized. You've got a lanyard hole, you've open pillar construction, so you can either tick your paracord just through one of the liners or through them both if you want to. Nice decorative uh, pins or body screws, if whatever you want to call them. Those are good. Pocket clips, they're okay. They're very close to the handle on both of these. And then they use button screws, so it can be tricky sometimes getting the uh, pocket clip to bottom out on your pocket. I do wish they would have used flush screws. I do like, though, that it's fairly close to the body. And then the front end of the pocket clip, it sticks out further than any of the rest of the pocket clip. It tries to go flat on the top, but not quite. Let's see what that looks like going into a pocket. So this one, go, well, actually, I need the deep pocket here. So this one rides over, and this time it went in all the way, so that's a good thing. And I found that too. It's just occasionally that it gets caught up. And I dropped my other knife, so now I gotta go. There we go. Here's the other one. Again, it wants to climb over. And hey, good news. That one went all the way in as well. So not too bad. You just have a little bit of the knife sticking out of the pocket. They are T6 screws on the pocket clip and the body screws. The uh, metal for these screws is fairly soft, so it's not too hard to strip these out. So be careful when you're undoing those. They are button screws that are you know, sunk into the G10, so they like to collect uh, lint and dirt in those uh, where the G10 meets the, meets the screw. We do have the room for a pocket clip. The, it's milled out for a pocket clip to change it to the left side if you want to. I like that. I do wish they'd put a plate in it though, so that this side would have a little plate. The way Ganzo does, uh, their knives cost less than these and they still make a profit, I'm sure. Otherwise they wouldn't still be around. So I'd like that. A nice little touch is CJRB likes to use these aluminum... Uh, oh, my brain just drew a blank. What those things are called pivot collars. So that's nice. They are sort of like a brass colored pivot collars. Nice little touch. The thumb studs on these, they're quite nice. It's the same size on both of them. You've got that uh, stepped at the top and then a rounded dome at the very top. They grip your thumb quite well and it's easy to deploy the blade, it, no problem. One of the things that's important to look at is, is this a sharpness choil or a forward choil? Well, I don't know. <laughs> it's too big for a sharpness choil and it's way too small for a forward choil. And if it was a forward choil, they could have done a number of things to make it fit the finger better. Now, if you've got smaller hands than I do and smaller fingers, mine are in the extra large range, but they're certainly not sausages. You know, you grab here and that sharp corner on the heel of the blade is going to cut into the side of your finger which is not a good thing. They've got 
very slow but angular plunges here instead of rounded ones. They do clear the heel of the blade, so it'll be easy to sharpen these knives right to the very heel, so that's a good thing. I just wish there was a little more room in here or less room so that we could have more cutting edge. The handle, some more things on the handle right now. They are inset liners, which I like, but the G10 has been rounded all the way around, so it's not hot in the hands. We've got this nice, soft, rounded line, very comfortable in hand. Any kind of grip you want to hold the knife with is comfortable. It's very good for that, but the pocket clip can get a little hot in the hand. A saber grip like this with your thumb on the spine, it is okay. I do wish they would have put a little bit of jimping on the spine here. Maybe it would ruin the lines with the thumb studs, I don't know, but that would be a nice touch. Let's take these things apart and see what they look like on the inside. Here we are with it taken apart. So as you can see, no skeletonizing. There's a little bit of skeletonizing in this one. You can see those holes if you look on that edge there, but not on uh, the liner lock side. So a little bit different. That's the only difference between the two. Uh, we've got D-shaped pivot pins, so they don't spin freely. There's the collars. We've got the ceramic ball bearings in nylon holders. Uh, there's a load of them. Sometimes you can get these uh, ball bearings where there's just a, like, seven or eight in a circle. This one's got two, four, six, eight, ten. So yeah, ten ball bearings in it. The uh, detent ball is ceramic as well, and there's your D-shaped hole so it doesn't freely spin. The other side has got a round hole that really does help get the pin in there because you only have to line it up on one side and not on both. Sometimes if the uh, D-shaped is on both liners, it can be tricky to get it in, so I like this. I prefer it that way. Stonewashed liners, which I like as well. Not bad. All right, now that we've seen that, what are the pros and the cons? And then we'll do the dimensions. As you can see, these things have been used. There's dirt in there. It's They're not the cleanest things. The pros are, I really like the basic blade shape. We've got a nice, strong tip. We've got the full thickness of the blade that goes right up to there. So a nice strong tip, and yet it's a precise tip. Easy to control and use. We've got a nice long, slow belly for slicing. The grind is fairly high, so this is a good cutting knife. And the handle, very comfortable. Some of the cons that I found have to do with the pivot area and the lockup. So let's look at that. This one has got a very soft detent, so you can just shake the knife. Let's see if I can get it. There we go. I was just a little off camera, brought my hand in and stopped and the blade deployed on its own. That's not good, especially in Canada. They call that centrifugal deployment, although really it's inertia, but that's besides the point. And I don't like that because yet yeah, it does mean that the blade comes out a little too easily. The detent is too soft. On this one, the detent is too hard. Sometimes when I want to deploy the blade, I end up having my thumb slip off of it. It's not going to happen now because I'm expecting it. But the detent is too strong on this one. You can hear it when it get closes. It closes very hard for a three inch blade. And then it makes it hard for the blade to come open. So, yeah, the detent. Too hard on this one, too strong, too soft, too weak on this one. Lockup on the large one, that's perfect lockup. I really like where that's locking up. Lots of room for it to wear over time all the way across. Solid, no up and down blade play. Actually, listen to this. There is a little up and down blade play on it now. That's after a bit of use. A little bit side to side blade play. This one, there's no blade play anywhere. Side to side, up and down, it's rock solid. The engagement is later than I would like. It's past the halfway point across, but there still is room for it to wear some more. It's not bad. It's just 
not good anymore. It's just a little bit below average of what I normally see on budget knives. Alignment when it closes is decent on both. There's not a lot of room to spare and both of them are a little bit close to the show side liner. They're not centered perfectly. Access to the lock release, very nice. There's good access there. You can easily get to that liner. It's got a nice chamfer on it. You can always get that lock, the lock bar opening out of the way. No problems, especially on the large one. There's a lot of room there. Well made. So for the price of these, I didn't tell you how much. Yeah, I did tell you how much it was in uh, USA at White Mountain Knives. Use my coupon code CCE and get 10% off. Uh, in Canada, I'll leave links down below. I didn't check if it was at Ante Integrity Knives. If it's at Integrity Knives, you can get 10% off of their price with my coupon code CCE. Okay, let's put this on the screen. We'll be talking about the dimension specs and stuff while this is on the screen. Let's start with the weight. 79 grams, 2.8 ounces. 112 grams, 3.95 ounces. So they are light for their size, which is a good thing. The sharpness from the factory, 115 bests, 145 bests. 200 and less is considered sharp, so they sharpen them from the factory. The cutting edge length, 87.6 millimeters, 3.449 inches. 74.7 uh, .7 millimeters, 2.941 for the cutting edge. The blade length, though, is 90.75 millimeters, 3.5725 inches. This guy is 77.3 millimeters, which is 3.043 inches. Yes, friends, it's over three inches long. Why would you make a knife that is smaller and not make it under three inches? I don't understand. Let's talk about the thickness now. The blade thickness is 3.11 millimeters, 1.225 inches, so an eighth of an inch. This guy's 2.61 millimeters, 0 0.103 of an inch, so closer to a tenth of an inch thick. The uh, blade depth, this way, 28 millimeters, 1.102 inches. 24.5 millimeters, that's 0.9645 inches. The thickness of the edge behind the grind, 0.68 millimeters, 27 thousandths of an inch. And that's right about where my finger is that I measured that. This one is 0.44 millimeters, 17 thousandths of an inch. So for D2, I'd much rather have 17 thousandths of an inch to start with than 27, because the first time I sharpen this, when I even out this very poor job of sharpening, it's, it might be 30 thousandths of an inch thick, just because it's going to take that much work to get an even angle all the way along. Talking about the grind angles, here's some images that give you the grind angles of these two knives. Yes, a lot of variability on the lengths of these. It takes a bit to fix them, but that's not uncommon. It happens an awful lot with budget folding knives. Anything up to $100, uh, that American dollars or more even, I've seen bad sharpening done. These are not uncommon. Let's talk about the handle now. The handle length is 11.63 centimeters, which is 4.5785 inches. This one is 10.1 centimeters, 3.9765 inches. The grip area, it's about 10 centimeters or 4 inches on this one. And this one is, where's my, look? about eight and a half centimeters, about three and a quarter inches. The handle thickness, 13.4 millimeters, which is 0.5275 inches. This one's 12.22 millimeters, which is 0.481 of an inch. So not that much different, really. The handle depth, now we're talking about this measurement within the grip area. 25.85 millimeters, that's 1.0175 inches. This one is 22.44 millimeters, which is 0.8835 inches. When the knives are closed, the 
widest distance is right here, 31.54 millimeters, which is 1.2415 inches. And this one here is 27.44 millimeters, 1.08 inches. And the total length of these knives, oh, I didn't put the inches on here again. This one is 19.35. This one is 17.82 centimeters. The in inches, I'll have it on the screen, but it looks like a little more than eight and an eighth. And this one is just a 32nd over seven inches. The balance point on these, pretty good. The skeletonizing was done right on these. They're good knives. Hopefully you won't need customer service. <laughs> I quite like how comfortable they are. So the hype for these is gone. They're now in stock wherever you want to look, pretty much. I do like that there's micarta now. That's a good thing. And hopefully they've been more careful with the, the detents on their newer production runs of these. Because clearly there's something wrong at CJRB and detents. If you like this video, please hit the like button down below. If you dislike the video, hit the thumbs down. Either way, it does help me out. Thank you for sharing this video with your friends, for commenting and subscribing. If you've not yet subscribed, hit that bell button so you'll be notified of future videos. And remember friends, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb. Bye for now.